ADC is the role without agency over the game's outcome. Or at least that's what it feels like. But ADCs do have some agency. Getting to three or four items and obliterating everything in front of you is your agency. Unfortunately, obtaining the gold for those items is the rough part. You're not an assassin who can just run around scoring free kills. It's frustrating, but ADC is the role that requires the best macro in order to thrive in solo queue. The only consistent way ADCs can get gold is through farm, so you need to be on point with your CS averages. The best ADCs in the world always have crazy high average CS. Even when they go 0 and 10, they probably have more CS on average than you do, and that's in Challenger Korean solo queue versus people who actually know how to punish ADCs. In this guide, we'll be covering some low elo mistakes that we saw very often in gold and platinum, which are hindering your ability to get your CS numbers high enough to actually be able to impact your games. All right, let's take a look at the first replay that we'll be reviewing. Lucian is doing quite well for himself this game, and his team has a 7k goal lead over the enemy team. After winning the dragon fight, Lucian correctly goes bottom to fix the wave there before taking his recall and going back to base to spend his hard-earned gold. Despite this being around gold elo, Lucian actually does something pretty impressive. Instead of committing to pathing mid and sharing farm with Ezreal, he looks to farm wolves and gromp on his way to bottom. This is perfect. His jungler is top, so he won't get raged at, and he picks up extra farm to accelerate his lead even further. But after clearing a few minions down here, Lucian immediately backs off and proceeds to run to safety instead of continuing to push. Why do you think this was a terrible decision? If you looked carefully, you would have noticed that there was no reason for him to be afraid. While Lucian did wolves, we saw Yone in mid lane and Teemo top. Now, he did see Rakan in the area, clearing his vision as he approached the bot wave. But as he clears it, we also see Jinx and Jarvan on the minimap. The only person that is here is Rakan, and there's no way that you die solo to Rakan as Lucian. He could have kept pushing and accelerated his farming, but instead goes to middle, which isn't terrible, but it's also not ideal. After farming a couple of waves in mid, he makes his way back bottom and farms blue on his way there appropriately. Unlike last time, Lucian does actually push very aggressively in the lane. This is correct, we've seen four members of the enemy team on the map in top lane. There's only one possible player that could be down here. The problem is that Lucian doesn't play this next segment appropriately, and gets hard punished by the 0-4 enemy Yone. Now he's forced to back, and loses all side lane pressure. What do you think he did wrong this time? The mistake was pushing tower, instead of just taking the enemy Krug camp. Yone was 0-4, but that doesn't mean that you can just disrespect him as an ADC. Look at how Lucian got engaged on, since he's so close to the enemy tower. Lucian doesn't have many options and can only kite toward Yone, not away from him. Lucian knew this would be a 1v1. If he does Krugs, he has so much more area to work with, and as a fed Lucian, with both summoner spells, he should very easily be able to deal with a weak Yone if he tried to contest him at Krugs. It may not seem like much, but being chunked out here cost Lucian a free Krug camp and that wave he left behind. The problem is, Lucian kept making small but constant mistakes in the side lane all game. This really kept his CS numbers down compared to Jinx who just power farmed. He very quickly got overtaken in power and Jinx was able to hard carry the game somehow getting 6 items way before Lucian could. The lesson here is simple. Always be aware of where every enemy is on the map, so you can make the best decisions possible surrounding side waves. Due to minions naturally pushing on the winning team, if you don't make the correct choices, it's very easy for your opponents to catch up since farm is always being funneled into them. By the way, if you're enjoying the video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Alright, let's move on to another replay to discuss another common mistake that we see. Here, Ash and her team are doing fairly well for themselves. They're not super far ahead like the Lucian game before, but with their small lead, they manage to take the dragon for free. Let's watch what happens next. After, Ash and her team all path toward mid, and initiate the ARAM fight that we've all come to know and love. Ash's team loses badly and their slight lead is thrown. So what should Ash have done? Well, the answer is simple. Her team sees everyone on the map. After dragon, Yasuo should go bottom to pressure the empty lane. When he doesn't, Ash should take over his duties and go herself. She sees everyone on the map, so she can just go bottom after Dragon. By going mid, she's basically incentivizing her teammates to fight a random 5v5. 
at this stage of the game with only one core item completed, RNG ARAM fights aren't the best way to snowball a lead as ADC. She doesn't do nearly enough damage to have any agency over who wins this fight at all. If she had gone bottom, she could pressure the tower, forcing someone on the enemy team to respond. When they do, Ash could rotate over and force a numbers advantage fight in mid, potentially. This has way more potential for going well than the fair fight we just saw. Or if no one reacts to her pushing, her team could just defend while she takes the bottom tower for free. Either way, she has a lot of impact on the map by going bot. We chose this specific replay though because the enemy was pushing very aggressively in mid. If Ash goes bottom, isn't it just likely that her team engages without her anyway? Yes, that is a big possibility. What we want to stress is that it shouldn't matter to you whether it might be likely that your teammates will die if you leave them alone. You have to have some level of trust for your teammates. Remember, you're all the same elo at the end of the day. Do you go mid at level 1 because your mid might randomly die if you don't? No, you obviously go bottom, because being paranoid about your teammates playing badly won't do any good. That's along the same mentality that you should have when making decisions like these. In this situation, Ash should just tell her team, hey, I'm going bottom to fix the wave and pressure. Care. Hopefully her teammates play accordingly and allow her to pressure the bot lane. And even, even if her team fights regardless of her saying that and lose the fight, who cares? It doesn't mean that you made the wrong decision and being results oriented when learning the game is pointless. Lastly, even if Ash's team happened to fight while she went bottom, she would at least be cross mapping the bot lane tower and trading objectives so it isn't even that bad. Once again, we saw the results of Ash's actions later on into the game. She kept foregoing farm in order to stay tightly grouped with her team, and it resulted in her being extremely behind in CS the whole game. As we said at the start, the whole point of ADC is to do damage, and when you tickle the enemy team, you're literally useless, and of course she loses the game eventually. Okay, on to our final replay. In that last one, we talked about what you may want to do when your teammate isn't making the optimal macro choice. In this one, we'll take a look at what you should be doing when your teammate's macro choices are actively hurting your ability to farm. Just like the other games, Jin and his team have a decent lead over the enemy. After taking Dragon, Jin sits mid waiting to collect some farm. Let's watch what happens. Lux is coming from base, so by the time that Jin is safe enough to hit the wave, he has to share most of it with Lux. Then they rotate bottom together, seeing if they can pick up a kill onto Lulu there and end up sharing more farm. Afterwards, they then rotate together up to mid to share more farm, but Jin gets caught in the process. Oh, awesome, Lux saved the day and turned it around. Ah, but then they overchase into Katarina and die. Hopefully you get how absolutely random and inefficient everything we just saw was. Jin and Lux shared so much farm and experience throughout that. Their rotation together towards bottom gave up mid control entirely, which is what allowed this first pick on Jin to happen in the first place. Jin got lucky that Lux obliterated the Twitch, but then a bit unlucky that Katarina killed them all. He had absolutely no say over anything that happened. Do you think this is how Jackie Love, Teddy, Deft, or any good ADC player plays the game? Just hoping that stuff works out by wandering around with their team the whole time? Of course not. They're actively looking to make good decisions to lead to consistent, predictable results. So, what was the problem here? Well, Lux pathed toward middle when Jin was already there. That's not Jin's fault. Lux is the one pathing toward him to share farm, which we know isn't ideal. You can't expect your teammates to make the correct macro choice every time though. Jin had two chances to find a new source of farm for himself and evade this situation. Did you notice when? The first chance that he had was when he saw Lux pathing middle at the beginning of the painful sequence. Knowing that she's coming, he could snatch up most of the wave before she gets there and then path towards top. If you notice, the wave is closer to his side of the map. This means that the wave is slow pushing toward the enemy. Going up there to fix the wave would be ideal anyway. If you don't know what fixing a wave means, basically if the wave is slow pushing away from you, you want to crash it into an enemy tower as quickly as possible. If you leave it as is, the slow push will kill a ton of enemy minions, denying your team farm, while also building up a huge wave for your opponent to farm in the process. Fixing slow pushing waves is one of the most important things to learn about macro. The second option that we had was to just stay bottom after this wave. 
It's not ideal, but he could technically just chill here and wait for the next wave to come into him. With this strategy, he'd be getting solo gold and experience, and then he could then push that and rotate to his team. That way he can build a numbers advantage through macro by forcing someone to go react to the wave that he pushed. Okay, this may all sound idealistic, but with practice you can start to see consistent results by realizing when you should go to side lanes to pressure. Let's take a look at an example where this is done fairly well. Kaisa is laning bottom when her team comes to aid her. They score a kill on Bard and things are off to a good start. Notice how Kaisa steps up, looking to push the tower to punish Bard's death, but then stops and immediately starts to channel her recall. That's because Camille is staying in bot. If Kaisa stayed, then her and Camille would just be sharing tower and minion gold. We should know how inefficient that is by now. Camille should technically be the one recalling and going back top, allowing Kaisa to stay down here. But if your teammate isn't doing what they should be doing, then you need to take responsibility and take over. Kaisa goes top and finds a source of solo farm for herself. We'll just disregard the solo kill on Wukong. It's not like Kaisa planned for him to misplay and overstay. But notice how she can keep pressuring, taking a bunch of waves for herself and even the enemy Krug camp. Not only is Kaisa getting solo gold, but so is Camille. She got a ton of waves and solo tower gold, so she gets to snowball even harder. Now that is good macro. These types of decisions get you consistent results with farm funneled not only onto yourself, but your teammates as well, enabling everyone on your team to get strong from solo gold. It is super important that as an ADC, you get comfortable with the idea of being in a side lane most of the game. Your teammates simply don't have good macro, so you can't just sit in mid like ADCs get to do in high elo. You need to actively be making up for their mistakes, and that usually involves you being alone in a side lane. And a huge component in doing that is lesson one, which was having the map awareness of where everyone is so that you can make informed decisions whenever you do decide to go off on your own. By the way, you should know where these videos come from. Our hyper improvement platform skill cap is by far the best place to be if you want to actually improve at League of Legends. You can input your rank before you sign up and see where we think you'll climb to. If you don't reach that rank while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped or you get your money back. We offer this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't, you shouldn't have to pay for it. So be sure to check us out after this. Alright, that's going to wrap up this guide. We hope you all enjoyed and we'll see you next time.